So I grew up in a Catholic home um, with three other brothers. Um, and uh, so I was blessed to have the faith passed down to me. I remember my dad, uh, he would pray evening prayer with my brothers and I. When he would talk about the strength of the Lord and his strong right arm, uh, he would flex his bicep. And I would look up at my dad and I would just look at him with wonder and awe. And I would say, if that's what God is like, uh, he casts down the mighty from their thrones and raises up the lowly uh, with his strong right arm, then God must be really awesome. We would go to Mass on Sunday and it would appease our conscience, uh, our obligation, our duty to go to Mass on Sunday. And the rest of the week was ours. Uh, my brothers and I, we all played hockey. We were all very good at sports growing up. Um, and hockey for me was, was my idol. Um, I loved playing hockey. My brothers loved playing hockey. My parents sent my brothers and I to public schools for the first time. I wasn't prepared for the, uh, the promiscuity, uh, the immorality. I gained a whole new set of friends. You know, they would talk about doing drugs. They would talk about promiscuity. Uh, they were popular and I wanted to be popular. You know, I wanted to fit in. I wanted to belong. And um, so I did what they did. Uh, sixth grade to all through the eighth grade. Uh, as well, did my brothers as well, you know. So one day, uh, I was watching TV by myself and I was flipping through the channels and I landed on EWTN uh, and a channel I intentionally avoid most of the time. <laughs> and they're advertising the rosary on EWTN three times a day and as I was just sitting there, um, just imagine my heart is like a rock and for the first time um, God's chisel of mercy struck it and a crack was formed and his light um, touched the center of my heart for the first time and I just cried. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know where it was coming from. I just knew that it was more powerful than anything I guess I've experienced in my life. You know, it's just peace was overwhelming my heart. that I'd always longed for, this presence of God's love and mercy. Uh, I wanted more. And so three times a day with EWTN for three months, <laughs> I prayed the rosary. Um, I did it in secret. I didn't want my family to find out. Uh, one time my brother did catch me and he started kicking me <laughs> while I was praying the rosary. But I didn't care because all I wanted was that peace. Mary is preparing my heart to be introduced to her son. And it was after doing that for three months that I found out that my grandparents signed us up for this youth conference. When my dad said, you brothers and you are going to a Steubenville youth conference, uh, you know, in my mind, the, the man I hated the most was telling me I'm gonna do some religious weekend. I don't even remember what the talks were about because uh, I didn't care at the time. And in fact, there was a kid behind me crying and I turned around and looked at one of the staff members and I said, you know, what is he crying about? You know, what's his problem? Saturday night, what they do is they, you have 3,000 teens in a tent with praise and worship music on the stage and the priest goes up and down the aisles with the monstrance with Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament, uh, who to me was just a piece of bread that we received on Sunday. The priest, every step that he took closer to me, it was like a step closer to the sun. And for the first time, his love, his mercy, um, I felt like my heart was going to explode and melt at the same time. Um, Jesus' presence in the Eucharist became so real. It just fell on my knees. It was so powerful. And I just started crying uh, because his mercy and his love I was just flooding my heart and, and I just let him do it. I let him love me. I let him overshadow me with his, his power, his presence. So I gave him my life. Uh, so after about five, five minutes of crying like a fat baby, <laughs> I looked over and saw my, to see what my brothers were doing, you know. Um, and they were on their knees crying. You know, everybody was like, the jocks met Jesus, you know, so like this crowd started forming around us. Everybody was laying hands on us, praying over us. Well, the mistake that I made, and um, my brothers and I were kind of in it together, the mistakes that we made together were that um, 
uh, well, we've met the Lord, we met Jesus, we gave him our lives that weekend, um, and now we're going to be free from all temptation, sin, and darkness. Uh, I did not overcome all of my favorite sins overnight. Um, uh, it's said that it takes at least six to eight months to become a saint, you know. Um, that's the rumor anyway. But we heard about Life Teen here at Christ the King and my brothers and I started going. I was 14 at the time and she gained a whole new set of friends, as did my brothers, uh, which were a huge support in our relationship with Christ. Men and women you can go to when you're struggling with sin and have pray with you and over you. you know, my brothers and I would do that with each other. Um, whenever we would be tempted with something, this thing or that, uh, we would go to each other. Uh, it would hurt our pride, uh, but we'd go to each other and ask each other for prayer, you know. And it worked. As my relationship with my own father got better. Uh, you know, like I said, I, you know, before I met Christ, I, I um, honestly admit that I hated my dad, but now uh, I love my dad. You know, I love spending time with him. You know, it took a while, you know, for me to allow God the Father's love come into my life. But I began to see him as the loving, kind, gentle father who at the same time as a ferocious lion, you know, looking to devour us with his love. Do you have any idea how much you are loved by the Father? And there is nothing you can do about that. There is a person standing right here overshadowing you right now, looking at you with his furious love. I saw that time, now in retrospect, when I met Christ in the Eucharist in Subinaville as the Father, uh, embracing me with his love. Jesus was the one who told the parable of the prodigal son, you know, and so Jesus was the medium through which that parable was communicated. So the same thing in my life, Jesus was the one through whom I encountered the Father in, in, in the Eucharist. You know, the prodigal son said, you know, Father, hire me as one of your servants, you know. Even as he was walking to the Father, his image of the Father was still lacking. You know, he thought that the Father would hire him as a servant, you know, as a, as a mere peasant, when in reality his identity as a son is what the Father wanted to restore. And the Father wouldn't ever hire him out as one of his servants. So to know that that's how the Father always looked at me, as a precious son, and that there's nothing I can do about that. For some people, the initial reaction is to run away because who am I that the Father would love me this much? You know, what is man in your eyes, O Lord? You know, as the psalmist says, but that's a false humility. If you want to um, live on the edge, uh, um, you know, ask Jesus first thing in the morning, uh, what do you want me to do today? So I give Christ, you know, the first fruits of the morning. Uh, you know, as a seminarian, we pray throughout the day, the liturgy of the hours, daily mass, you know, without the Eucharist. I wouldn't have the strength to do what I do every day. And my constant relationship with Mary. I wouldn't be here without Mary. You know, the rosary, ugh, the ro without the rosary, you know. Most people uh, hit a brick wall in their relationship with Jesus because they don't know uh, the greatest disciple. So if I were to say anything to anybody who wanted to hear anything, you know, there's so many voices in the world, there's only one voice of truth and the truth says, that you are precious, the Father loves you, and he invites you to a life that far surpasses any kind of relationship you could possibly have here on earth with any other human, and that it's free. It just costs you your life. Because <laughs> it cost him his life. So be bold, don't be afraid, give him your life and you'll experience a joy that uh, is worth dying for.